I got a question on the 626 forums about throttle cable adjustment, throttle adjustment on a 2000 V6. Now I have the i4, but I do have a V6 throttle body here that I can show you in a minute. Thought I would just take a couple minutes to explain how the throttle position works. Now he has OBD2, so he can actually plug into an OBD2 scan tool and see his throttle position. And his throttle position is currently at, I believe, 12%, which isn't too bad, but ideally you want the throttle to be fully closed at 0%. All of your bypass air is handled through the idle air adjust screw and the idle air control valve. This is your IAC right here. It's got a different design on the V6 um, starting in 1996 to 2002. It's, it's got a slightly different design, but for all intents and purposes, that's your IAC, and that's what controls your idle air, your bypass air. This is your throttle right here, your throttle. And that's your throttle cable that goes up from your accelerator pedal. So when you press on the gas pedal, it actually pulls this cable, and that is what depresses your throttle and opens your butterfly valve. And that throttle angle is sent from the throttle position sensor to the ECU, or the computer, also known as an ECM an ECU, also known as a PCM, Powertrain Control Module, Engine Control Unit, or Engine Control Management System, ECMS sometimes. For all intents and purposes, we'll just say it's an ECU. The ECU takes that throttle position, one of many sensors that it uses to calculate air fuel ratio and maps, and it also uses the MAF sensor and the O2 sensor um, in conjunction with the throttle position sensor. But if that throttle position sensor is off, it can throw off a lot of other stuff. Your throttle body, where the air goes in to the actual throttle body, you know, it's a big tube, and near where that valve flips up and down can get dirty. And that provides less air that can go in, and sometimes it ends up actually getting stuck. So when the throttle is closed, it's stuck, and it doesn't want to be unstuck unless you kick your accelerator pedal, which is an issue that I've had in the past, actually. I had to kick that thing. So what I did to fix that was uh, to lube the, the throttle valve itself, the valve inside the throttle body. There's a rod that goes through and I just lubricated each end of the rod and that freed it up and now I can accelerate and press without having to kick it. Anyway, he's having an issue where his throttle position sensor is reporting that it's at 12% open. And he says no matter what, he can still see that it is kind of open a little bit. It's not fully shut. It's not 90 degrees up. It is it is probably at 12 degrees. He needs to figure out how to get that thing to slap shut during idle. Well, that's where your throttle stop screw comes into play. And I have a little handy dandy laser pointer here because it's really hard to get down in there to show you exactly what it is. And this is on the I-4, the four cylinder. Okay, that right there is your throttle stop screw. And that is what controls how far open or closed your throttle is. So you would unwind that or loosen it. And as you loosen that, you'll actually notice that your throttle will actually start closing up. Sometimes if an adjustment to the actual throttle cable has been made in the past, then no matter how far you unscrew that throttle stop screw, it's not going to, to come out far enough. So another adjustment is the actual throttle cable. There is an adjustment on the throttle cable itself. It's That one is really hard to get at, really hard to see, especially on the i4. Okay, there is a very, very small locking collar, a little tiny white locking collar right there. See that tiny little white tab? You have to either press up or down. I'm not exactly sure, but I'll post the directions to the factory service manual that shows you how to do this. Either press up or down, and then on the actual collar, right there on the middle of the collar, you can actually see a big arrow. You would uh, unwind that, and that is how you release tension to your throttle cable. And that provides you a little bit more room so that your throttle valve can fully close. And once your butterfly valve is fully closed and fully seated, you want to make sure that your throttle position sensor is reporting that it is at 0% throttle angle. Throttle angle is done with percentage. It's not done by angle. And an angle is 0 to 90 degrees. 0 to 90 degrees. That's your range of motion. But your ECU does it in percentage. So it's 0% to 100%. 
here's a little bit of math for you. For every one degree of throttle angle, so let's say it, you're gonna move that throttle angle up one degree, it actually equals 1.1%. .1 so for every percentage point, that you go up, you add 0.1 actually. So if your throttle angle is at two degrees, that's actually gonna be 2.2%. If it's at three degrees, that's gonna be 3.3%. Four degrees, 4.4%. You just add 0.1, a tenth, and that's how you go from zero degrees to 90 degrees, which equals 0% to 100%. So that's an easy way that you can check what your real throttle angle is in degrees versus what the percentage is that your ECU is telling you. So if your throttle angle is telling you that you're at 12%, then you're actually at 13.2 degrees. I believe that's right. Something like that. So I hope you understand the difference between throttle angle and throttle percentage but your ecu will only tell you what it is in percent and from that you can calculate what the actual angle is knowing that if you have your throttle angle at zero degrees it should be at zero percent if your throttle position sensor is reporting that it is not at zero percent when it is in fact fully closed you need to adjust your throttle position sensor it's pretty easy stuff huh yay go me doing a dance i don't know why this is the klg4 manifold so this actually came off a 1998 to 2002 v6 mazda 626 here's a throttle body right here and thankfully this is off the car so i can show you the back side of what the v6 throttle body looks like the v6 throttle body has this really neat double hinge spring there's actually two springs there's one spring here there's one spring up here there's two springs and as you can see there are two slides it's a little bit more complicated than the four cylinder now there are two screws this up here is going to be your hinge adjustment and the only thing that this guy does it is really tiny and the only thing that this guy does as you can see is it makes sure that this stops where it should and I don't recommend that you use, that you try and adjust this. This is usually set perfect. No, don't mess with that one. The one that you want to mess with is this one up here. That's the throttle stop screw for the V6. And as you can see, that's what a throttle stop screw does. It's adjustable. Okay, so now the butterfly valve is fully open and fully closed. Fully open, fully closed. With this, fully open should be 90 degrees, fully closed, butterfly valve is now fully closed should be reporting at zero percent zero percent one hundred percent zero degrees ninety degrees so that's how your throttle position works fairly simple once you can actually see how it works and on the v6 up here this is your idle air adjust screw it's right at the top really easy to get to and your throttle position sensor is right here as well really easy to get to right at the top on the four cylinder the throttle position sensor is like way down here at the bottom it's a pain in the ass to get to you have to remove the intake to get it at it on the four cylinder on the v6 it is freely accessible right here at the top no problem another neat thing about the v6 is that if i press on this top hinge here nothing happens that's because the cable winds around here and sticks in here so only this part when you press on your gas pedal only this part from here to here is pulled in that direction and the whole thing moves if you try and press on on the top nothing's going to happen it gets jammed but you can press here maybe now you can kind of see how the double hinge works now, i don't know why it's double hinged maybe because it's the v6 it has more torque more abuse i honestly don't know Compared to the V6, the i4 is pretty simple. It's just a single hinge with the throttle cable going in there. And if you want to ever get this throttle cable off, you have to pinch these in right here. You have to press these in, and then this whole thing will pop out. Uh, there's actually four little tabs here. One on this side, one on this side, and then there's one on the back and one on the back. And I just take a, a little screwdriver and kind of push in the tab on the side while you pull up and... Uh, Obviously you want to disconnect that. Actually, I'll just 
I will see if I can show you how to disconnect the throttle cable. First thing you want to do is press down on the throttle. So go full throttle, push it all the way down, and then get your other finger, middle finger back here, and wind it off the side like that. And then it just kind of jiggles, jiggles out. I don't know if you can see this little notch here. That's a little space that the cable is supposed to come out of. Like that. And that's how your throttle cable is disconnected. Now that your cable is disconnected, it's a lot easier to work with your, uh, your cable adjuster. So if you ever have to do a, an adjustment on your throttle cable, obviously first thing you want to do is disconnect your cable. Uh, and I highly doubt I'm going to be able to do it with one hand. Well, maybe I will. Oh, there we go. It just takes practice, I guess. I've had a lot of practice. So, that's how you adjust your stuff. I'm not going to actually adjust it because mine's set just right and I don't want to mess with it. And the only time that you ever want to mess with it is if it's set incorrectly. Don't go adjusting it if you don't know what you're doing because you can make things worse. You really can. Uh, you can really mess up your MPG, um, your air fuel ratio. Only adjust it if you absolutely have to. So if you ever do have to make a throttle adjustment or throttle position sensor adjustment, I'm not going to go into the diagnostics in this video. I'll get to that in a later video. Uh, but at least this way you have a primer on kind of how the system works and when and why you should adjust it. That is your throttle system for the Mazda 626, both i4 and V6. Cool.